call to order this regular March 21st, 2016 meeting of the Robertson County Commission. I will recognize Pastor Arlen Smith of the, of the Purpose Life Church for the invocation. Be followed by the place to the flag. Please stand. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor Bradley. Councilmen and women, thank you very much for this opportunity. As a pastor and fellow pastors, it's a great privilege and it's a great honor that you guys could still invite the presence of God into these meetings. And I want to say thank you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence and I thank you for each lady and gentleman in this room. I ask that you bless them, that Father, tonight's business will be conducted with the mind of Christ placed upon each one, that Father, as we... Uh, Go about the business tonight. Father, we will keep in mind that we represent a great county that have great people. And that, Father, as we represent them, that may we do everything that's pleasing and honorable to the Word of God and that will bring our county to a greater aspect of becoming a greater aspect of influence, not just in this area, but in the whole state of Tennessee. And so, Father, we ask for your blessings and your favor to rest upon this meeting tonight. Father, may you continue to position us and place us as a county that we see your hand upon us in everything we do. We ask for all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Commissioners, if you'll press yes and confirm, you should be registered into our voter system. There being two commissioners absent. <coughs> This is 22 present. I need to declare that we do have a quorum. Uh, you have in your packet the minutes from the February meeting. What's your pleasure? Motion approval. I have a motion for approval by Commissioner uh, Baggett and second by Commissioner Gregory. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no, so they are approved. Under communications, the chair will entertain a motion to make Mr. Dan Riley our veteran service officer and a very special group of Robertson Countyans members of this body. I have a motion by Commissioner Eaton, second by Commissioner Jackson. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Dan, you have the floor. Mayor Bradley, uh, County Commissioners, Madam Clerks, uh, distinguished guests and visitors, my name is Dan Riley, Robertson County Veteran Service Officer. I want to thank the Commission for allowing me a few moments of the time for this meeting to uh, tell you what Governor Bill Haslam has declared for the state of Tennessee concerning the Vietnam conflict. Uh, and with me, I've invited veterans from Robertson County and also from Middle Tennessee to stand with me as this proclamation is read. These veterans represent all the branches of the service. They represent themselves. They represent the families who stood by them during the conflict and afterwards. They represent those who were killed, those who are missing, and those who came home and passed away, and those who are too sick to be here tonight. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for letting us have this opportunity to, for this and Terry Wilson, uh, another Robertson County Veterans Service Officer, 
or read Governor Bill Haslam's proclamation. State of Tennessee proclamation by the governor. Whereas the Vietnam War fought from 1964 to 1975 finally ended with the complete withdrawal of combat troops on March 30th, 1973, and whereas with approximately 3.4 million United States military members deployed to Vietnam, more than 153,000 were wounded and over 58,000 lost their lives, and whereas 766 prisoners of war were taken in Vietnam and 1,624 are still missing in action, including 27 Tennesseans, we will remember and honor them with the flying of the POW MIA flag encouraged especially on March 29th and whereas a black wall stands in our nation's capital immortalizing the brave Americans who gave all to serve their country in an unpopular war with names still being added and whereas the homecoming for many members of our armed services did not include the respect, gratitude, and recognition that was deserving of them. And while we cannot correct the shameful way they were treated then, we can honor them now. And whereas passing legislation in 2008 to proclaim March 29th as Vietnam Veterans Day, Tennessee became the first state to honor Vietnam veterans in such a way. And whereas almost 1,300 Tennesseans never made it home to their families and friends who we remember and honor today. Now therefore, I, Bill Haslam, Governor of the State of Tennessee, do hereby proclaim March 29, 2016 as Vietnam Veterans Day in Tennessee and encourage all citizens to join me in this worthy observance. In witness whereof I here have hereto unto set my hand and cause to affix the official seal of the State of Tennessee to be affixed at Nashville on this 22nd day of February 2016, Bill Haslam. advocacy meeting at the Highland Rim Experiment Station Research Center and I have asked Dr. Barry Sims who's the executive director there to come and to share some of the content from the last meeting that we had and at this time I'll entertain a motion to make Dr. Sims a member of this body have that by Commissioner Wilson and second by Mr. Gregory all those in favor say aye, aye. Opposed, no. so Dr. Sims you're a member of the Robertson County Commission Thank you, Mayor Bradley, uh, commissioners, uh, audience. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. I come uh, in by invitation of uh, Mayor Bradley. Uh, he is on our advocate group at the UT Holler Room Ag Research Center. Uh, I just, uh, again, it's a pleasure. I come tonight. Uh, we met about three hours, however. He says I have five minutes, so uh, I'm supposed to summarize that. Uh, how many of y'all, let me just ask, how many of y'all have heard of, of the Governor's Rural Challenge? I'm, uh, hopefully, you, if you have it, uh, go read a little bit about it. And uh, he, he actually came out with that in 2012. Uh, and basically, it was, uh, he set a goal. Um, well, he, he challenged the Tennessee Department of Ag, University of Tennessee Institute of Ag, and the uh, Farm, uh, Farm Bureau uh, Federation to uh, develop a strategy for ensuring growth and pr uh, prosperity in agriculture and forestry products in the next decade. So we're already two years, a couple years into that already. He set a goal of making Tennessee, he wants to make Tennessee number one in the southeast of the development of agriculture and forestry. He emphasized the uh, opportunities to increase farm income and agribusiness investment, uh, asking for practical, affordable, and actionable steps 
to boost rural economic development. Of course, we're right here in one of the biggest agricultural counties in the state, so it's very important to us. The plan, which outlines four major recommendations, there's uh, 27 specific action steps uh, developed again um, for the next 10 years. Now, that's 27. I'm not going to start to go over all those, but that's kind of real briefly the governor's real challenge. You can go read more about it. Uh, basically, let me say a little bit about the University of Tennessee Institute of Agriculture. Uh, they are located, it is located, uh, the main office right uh, near campus at UTK. UTK uh, plus UT Martin, UT Chattanooga, those are formula units. UT Institute of Ag is a non-formula unit. What that means is UT Institute of Ag gets a separate budget line item. So in years that um, needing more income for the university, they raise tuition, right? I know all about that. I have three, the third one's about to graduate up there right now. So anyway, they raise in, in, income, or excuse me, tuition. Institute of Agriculture cannot do that. We, we don't charge tuition. So, and by the way, the Institute of Agriculture involves uh, 10 ag research centers across the state, one of which is right here in Springfield, the Island Rim Ag Research Center. Also in the, involves all the departments, plant sciences, vet school, animal science, ag econ, all, and so on and so forth. Saying that, uh, to meet the governor rule, governor's rule challenge, a budget was submitted this year, but it was not initially in the budget. The thought was that UT can raise uh, tuition. Well, Institute of Ag can't do that. So anyway, that's, that's the issue. Uh, there's some headway been made in the last few weeks. I'm hearing good things that might, may happen, but a little extra um, encouragement might be good if anybody feels, and that's the reason Howard asked me to come and address uh, this body tonight. So I'm not going to go much more into it, but just say that, uh, you know, dairy, beef cattle, row crops, we can all relate to that. It's right here in Robertson County. It's very much a, a part of our, our uh, you know, industry, the number one industry, I think, in the whole county. So uh, I could, you know, get more specific, but basically, some new positions are proposed, uh, increased funding, support statewide extension, which would be go through the county extension, which Robertson County is a very active county extension, uh, with collaboration with state extension specialists and, that's, and those sorts of folks. But again, dairy and beef and uh, crop, several new positions would be hired in, in programs. The uh, Center of Profitable Agriculture, which is housed at Spring Hill at the Middle Tennessee Ag Research Center, they've helped a lot of um, value added in, uh, farming, everything from, um, um, well, all, all kinds of things, new enterprises and that sort of thing. So the vineyards is in here, you know, grape industry continues to increase, the wine industry, um, crop production efficiency, and so on and so forth. And I, again, I could go on and on, but I think in the interest of time, basically, uh, increase in funding to help meet the governor's rule challenge for the Institute of Agriculture. We appreciate the opportunity. Um, with that, Howard, I'll, I'll step down and appreciate any support. I will succinctly say what Barry alluded to, and that is we need to encourage our legislature, specifically Senator Roberts and Dr. Kumar, to adequately fund the UT Institute of Agriculture. We are in a $140 million per year industry in Robertson County. So there's nothing that's any more important than that. So very important that we advocate for that and see our center continue to grow and thrive. And I know you've had some downsizing statewide in terms of positions over the years. If we could just get those positions restored, that would be a great step forward. Yeah, so, so. And in fair disclosure, I wanted Barry to make that statement for you because I know it's very important, but uh, you have been brought here under surreptitious conditions. Amy, come join us. And she was a co-conspirator. <laughs> As many of you know, Dr. Sims is uh, leaving us because he has gotten a promotion with the UT system. <laughs> and so therefore the cat's out of the bag. But we did not want to let him leave without uh, showing our gratitude and appreciation for all that he and Amy have done for our community. And uh, we will never forget that. And we have something for you. Right here. She asked me to dinner tonight. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be on a less late flight. Well, you wouldn't have gotten this. That's right. <laughs> Whereas Dr. Barry Sims has served as director of the Highland Rim Ag Research Center since 1998, and whereas he has received degrees from UT Knoxville, UT Martin, and holds his PhD at the University of Arkansas, whereas Dr. Sims has proven leadership skills, having served as president of the Robertson County Chamber, the Springfield Kiwanis Club, as well as successfully competing leadership Robertson County and leadership Middle Tennessee, 
In Plymouth, while Dr. Sims has used his leadership skills and knowledge to serve his county, he has decided to take on a full-time position at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. And whereas his dedication to agricultural research and education here in our county will be greatly missed, we wish him the best and, his, and best of luck in his new endeavor. So therefore, I, Howard Bradley, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of Robertson County in the state of Tennessee, do hereby proclaim tomorrow, Tuesday, March 22nd, 2016, as Dr. Barry Sims Day in Robertson County, and invite his family, friends, and fellow Robertson Countyans to applaud all he has done for our community, done this 21st day of, of March 2016. Dr. Sims, we will miss you. Godspeed, and thank you for all that you've done for us. This uh, Mayor Bradley and Mayor Carnell and the whole community is really, really just uh, welcome me in. They, they threw me into the chamber and those kinds of things. I, I'm, I'm just right off the bat. Uh, but anyway, and it got me involved. But I just, I love, we love the people here. And anyway, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We are delighted tonight to have Mr. Ted Crozier from our neighbor in Montgomery County, who is a candidate for Circuit Judge. Ted, stand up, please. Let us see you. Thanks for coming, Ted. Glad to have you here. <laughs> and the next thing the chair has are reports. And the first one, 7.1, is animal control. 7.2 is from the highway department. 7.3 is from our veteran service officer. 7.4 is the trustee statement of funds. 7.5 from the Planning Commission, 7.6 from Fire Service, 7.7 .7 from EMS, 7.8 from Solid Waste, 7.9 from the Inmate Expense Report, 7.10 is EMA, 7.11 is uh, county's financial statements. Those are all of the uh, reports the chair has. What's your pleasure? I have a motion may be accepted in order to file by Commissioner Couch and second by Commissioner Stubblefield. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Under uh, elections and appointments, we had, uh, we're sorry to say, a resignation on the part of Commissioner Adcock. And so I'm going to recognize now Commissioner Duggar for a report from the uh, nominating committee. Mayor Bradley, Ms. Ashley, commissioners, and members of the audience, the nominating committee met, and we nominated uh, Billy Bogle to fill the to replace Lanny Adcock on the um, budget committee. That's in form of a motion. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Baggett. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. So thank you, Commissioner Bogle, for agreeing to come on to serve on the budget committee once again. Uh, we're now ready for a public hearing on planning and zoning. We recognize Mr. Bob Hogue, our county planner. If you are here to speak, in, to speak in favor of or in opposition to any rezoning resolution, if you will please stand and state your name for the clerk, uh, then we'll give you an opportunity to, uh, to speak. Mr. Uh, Hogue. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the commission. We have three uh, rezonings to be heard tonight. All three of them are from... AG2 Agricultural Residential to RP80 Rural, Preserva Rural Preservation District. The first one is from Mr. Paul Wilson on on uh, Owens Chapel Road, and he's request <coughs> requesting this rezoning in order to create a lot around an existing dwelling. Anyone here to speak to that resolution? Mr. Uh, the second one is from Mr. Tim Hunt Tim Hunter. Uh, and uh, he is requesting that that you rezone his property on green road in order that he may create an additional lot uh, there's already an existing house on the property and he rezone it where he can create an additional building lot on the property anyone here to speak of that resolution Mr. Um, and the final one is from mr john p kramer 
on, on, on the corner of Woodard Road and Minnish Road, and he is also has an existing dwelling and is requesting that it be rezoned so he can also create an additional building lot on this property. Anyone here to speak to that resolution? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing at this time and bring these two resolutions back to the commission for your consideration. <coughs> Make a motion to approve. Have a motion for approval by Commissioner Edcock. If someone will second on their on their device, have a second by Commissioner Jackson. By ready to vote. If you're in favor of these three resolutions, vote yes and confirm. If you're opposed, vote no and confirm at this time. There being 22 votes in favor and. Uh, two absent, I say that resolutions approved. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Under new resolutions, I'm going to recognize Commissioner Bowens from the Budget Committee for the first two uh, new resolutions. Madam Clerk, County Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you resolution 0321-16015. A resolution amended the budget. This is a uh, tobacco grant. I move for adoption. A motion and a second. Question, uh, second by Commissioner Cal. This is uh, the tobacco uh, grant money from the state. What's in reference to it? Any questions? Question. Question being called for. If you're in favor of this resolution, vote yes and confirm. If you oppose, vote no and confirm at this time. Two votes in favor, none opposed, and two absent. I feel that resolution is approved. Commissioner Bowens. This is a resolution 03 20, 21 16016. This is a resolution uh, for liability and property. It's was an increase in the appraisal fee. And I move for the adoption. And is there a second? Second by Commissioner Hagee. Any discussion? Question. Question being called for. Commissioner Bowens. Motion and a second. Yes, and confirm if you're opposed, vote no and confirm at this time. There being 20 votes in favor, none opposed, and two absent, I declare this resolution approved. I recognize now Commissioner Stacy Moore from the Education Committee for a total of three resolutions. Commissioner Stacy Moore. Mayor Bradley, Madam Clerk, fellow commissioners, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, I have resolution number 032-116017, the resolution to declare Board of Education Central Office Surplus Property, and this property is located on Woodland Street in Springfield, Tennessee. I move for adoption. A motion and a second. Second by Commissioner Haley. Any discussion? Question. Questions been called for. If you're in favor of this resolution, vote yes and confirm. If you're opposed, vote no and confirm at this time. Votes in favor, two opposed, and one abstention. I declare that resolution approved. Mr. Moore. Resolu resolution uh, 032-116018. Resolution to approve county highway commissioner bond. I move for adoption. Motion and a second. Uh, bond for Mr. Hale, our <coughs> newly appointed highway, super, highway uh, commissioner. Second by Commissioner Farmer. If you're in favor of this resolution, vote yes and confirm. If you're opposed, vote no and confirm at this time. Okay. Two votes in favor, none opposed, and two absent. I declare the resolution approved. Commissioner Moore. Resolution number 032-116019. Resolution to declare surplus property for the Board of Education. I move for adoption. I have a motion and is there a second? Second by Commissioner 
Do a more. Oh, do y'all want me to tell you what it is real quick? Let's see. There are four vehicles for surplus. 1993, 72 passenger. 1999, 78 passenger. 2003 Ford E450 speed bus. Is that special, special, special education? education? Okay. And another 2003 Ford E450 special education bus. So much. President, do call for if you're in favor of this resolution, vote yes and confirm. If you're opposed, vote no and confirm at this time. There be twenty-two votes in favor, none opposed, and two absent. I declare that resolution approved. We're going to ask Commissioner Bowens again for a budget amendment in regards to cremation of the unclaimed. Mr. Bowens. This is resolution zero two two two. 16011. This is a resolution about cre cremation, and we put $1,200 in the budget, but we see that we have exceeded that. It's a move for adoption. A motion is a second, second by Commissioner Edcock. Any discussion? Are we going to raise our budget amount of this for next year? We just, it's just going to be us at, at I think so, place. but I mean, we, we went for years, Commissioner Haley, without spending anything in that line item, and then we did. We started going up a little more last year, and yeah, I expect that trend's going to be up, honestly. So we probably ought to consider a little more next time. Mr. Mayor, is this the second reading? Yes, yes. second reading. Yes. Any further discussion? Question. Question being called for. If you're in favor of this resolution, vote yes and confirm. If you're opposed, vote no and confirm at this time. Twenty votes in favor, none opposed, and two absent on a credit resolution approved. Any old business to come before this line? Any new business to come before this body? Chair would advise the commission that uh, at the April 18th meeting I will be representing the Greater National Regional Council in Washington, and you'll be capably led by our chair pro tem, Commissioner Steve Haley. Appreciate Steve. Uh, doing that, and also my, my thanks to Commissioner Bob Hogan, who will be doing the county report for Good Morning Robertson County uh, that morning. So uh, appreciate you all helping out in that in that case. We are going to make our case in Washington for community development block grants, which is always something that we, that we have to do, and go up and plead our case for the for the region. Uh, seeing no new business, Chair will entertain will. Uh, uh, recognize Commissioner Bowens for the election of notice. Mm -hmm. And I have a second by Commissioner Jackson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. So there is approved. Chair, we're going to a motion to adjourn. Motion, adjourn. A motion by Commissioner. All right. All those in favor say aye. We stand adjourned. The Robertson County Commission held their regular March meeting, March 21st, 2016, the juvenile courtroom, a meeting of about 40 minutes. Began the evening with the invocation by Pastor Arlen Smith, which is a pastor here in Springfield at the Purpose Life Church. And we were very pleased tonight to honor our uh, Vietnam era veterans uh, from Robertson County. Governor Haslam has done a proclamation honoring them. And uh, so we wanted to make, that, make sure that was known throughout Robertson County, so they were invited to uh, join us tonight. And then we also had the pleasure of uh, uh, honoring Dr. Barry Sims, who is the executive director out at Howland Rim that most of you know. And uh, Dr. Sims is leaving us for a new position at UT Knoxville, and we shall certainly miss him. And we wanted to show our gratitude to he and his wife, Amy, for all they've done for our community over the years. So, so Godspeed, Dr. Sims, and we'll look forward to your, uh, to your future progress. Uh, there was one appointment to the Budget Committee. Commissioner Billy Bogle came back on the Budget Committee to replace uh, Commissioner Lanny Edcock, who had recently resigned. We had three rezoning resolutions, all of which were approved. Uh, without opposition. Under new resolutions, we had a uh, uh, line item uh, in the 
Health Department where some money from a tobacco cessation program grant from the state was incorporated into their budget. There was also a, a slight increase in our liability insurance and property insurance that was put into a budget amendment. Uh, then we uh, took up the issue of the old school central office there on the corner of 22nd and Woodland Street, which all of you know very well. It was transferred from school board control to the county control. So we'll be looking at opportunities to auction off that property sometime, we hope, in the not too distant future. There's about four acres of land that goes with that, so we hope that we'll find a suitable purchaser for that. They approved the surety bond for Mr. Fred Head, who is the new uh, highway commissioner appointed by the county commission at the last meeting. Uh, there was surplus property in terms of uh, buses by the Board of Education that were declared surplus, so therefore they can be sold. And then there was a little more money added for uh, uh, county-funded cremations. There are sometimes bodies that uh, are not claimed and the families do not have the forewithal to uh, take care of that, so the county has worked out an arrangement with a crematorium here locally. And uh, so that was, uh, that was done to add a little more money into that budget. There was nothing coming up under old or new business. Informed the commission that I would be away at the April meeting, but the Commissioner Haley would be uh, 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 there uh, at this time and appreciate him uh, stepping up and doing that. So uh, we are now, our budget committee is complete. They will begin budget hearings in the not too distant future as we work toward a budget for fiscal year 2017 that seems hardly possible uh, here we are in march of 16 the time continues to fly fly past us but I do appreciate the time that you take to keep yourselves informed and uh, we will be having a general election in robertson county coming up in august we have some school board seats up very very important elections and elections that seldom get the kind of attention they deserve We'll also be electing some highway superintendents. Uh, the assessor will be on the ballot. So uh, really important, especially in regards to those school board elections, that we inform ourselves about who the candidates are and what they stand for and, and try to have the absolute best school board that we can have as we go forward. So stay tuned for more information about that. <clears throat> and once again, thank you for joining the Robertson County Commission.